students. So if you are watching this video, it means that you missed our Zoom class from earlier, which is fine. Um, but I just want to go over the notes so that you understand exactly the concepts that we're going to be talking about with the early humans and our rise of civilization. So in the first slide, you have um, just a basic introduction about archaeology. And archaeology is the study of past societies based on what people have left behind. So oftentimes, archaeologists actually study these artifacts, which are the objects, the things that people leave behind um, from those past societies. So some examples of artifacts include tools and weapons, art and sculpture, pottery, jewelry, the physical human remains are also considered artifacts, as well as buildings and monuments that are built. In addition, we also have anthropology, which are, is actually the study of human life and the culture of people. So oftentimes we see fossils, which are the remains of those plants and animals. By studying the fossils, archaeologists and anthropologists are able to learn a bit more about what people ate, what types of animals were around, and just their overall way of life. The first group of early humans is called the hominids. And these hominids, or early humans, um, were able to walk upright on two feet. Another group of early humans was called Australopithecus, and they were some of the first hominids to have thought to have emerged within East Africa, located around the Great Rift Valley between three and four million years ago. Part of that group, Australopithecus, is something called Homo habilis, which simply means handyman. And they were um, expected to have emerged between 2.5 and 1.6 million years ago. Then we have Homo erectus, which is a second stage of early human development. And again, it's the meaning that humans were able to walk in an upright position, and they emerged around 1.8 million years ago. These first hominids were believed to have actually migrated out of Africa and began moving into Europe and Asia. They also used more complex tools. The next group is called Homo sapiens. About 250,000 years ago, the Homo sapien, which also translates to wise person, emerged within um, parts of Africa, Europe, and into Asia. Eventually, these two groups, uh, this group split into two distinct groups, one group being called the Neanderthals, and then the other group simply being a variation called Homo sapien sapien. The Neanderthals were located in the Neander Valley of Germany, thought to have lived between 100,000 and 30,000 years ago in parts of Europe and what today is known as Turkey. They used stone tools. They were believed to have some primitive early signs of religious beliefs, um, especially because one of the things that they did was they buried their dead in graves. It was originally thought that these Neanderthals were killed off by that other group, the Homo sapiens sapiens, but new evidence has actually emerged that tells us there may have been some mixing where um, they had genetic um, commonalities between these two groups. So as you can see in the picture of the school of the skull, the Homo sapien sapien um, tends to show more of what our skulls look like. They tend to be more um, rounded and curved, whereas for the Neanderthal, you'll notice that the skull itself is very elongated, meaning longer in the back. I'm going to pause for the presentation for just a moment to show a video on the Flowcabulary website. Alright, so what you're saying is that I'll put this in the ground and, and I'll put some water on it and, and something's going to grow. Uh, you sure? Man, we didn't know 
always look like this. We didn't have fire, couldn't cook like this. We didn't sleep with a pillow. Lived in trees originally. So if you cried, you would weave in a willow. But one monkey comes down, it's cool. When he gets up on his nine legs, he can use tools. Might kill a bird or two, but that's not happening much. Instead, he's picking blueberries and he's gathering nuts. But what's this? He's making the stone knife. Now he's hunting antelope his whole life. But it's a cold night with no light. It's dark as cocoa. No home? That could drop a same man loco. Picture this like Kodak. He roams. He's a nomad. Following herds of pachyderms or ever they go now. He rubs two sticks. Makes a fire. Now his meat and food is so easy to chew. This African man was mostly grunting. Couldn't think in our terms. He didn't have words. So he makes a word for fire. A word for water. A word for his son and his daughter. Hey, Dad. He does another thing that no animal tries. He paints paintings on the cave wall. Why? I don't know, but he's an African. He's an Ethiopian. And guess what, kid? So are you because he made babies. Yeah. And they made babies. Yeah. And they made babies. Uh. And they made a baby, and that baby is you. Uh. I'm cool, her meets her, your flow captain. I throw spears like a crow magnet. That's the early man, huh? he was going insane. Tired of chasing animals across the plains. His wife picking berries and fruit from the tree. She like, we can grow food if we plant these seeds. Now she's like, huh? this is sweet, my man. <laughs> we eating bread from the wheat we plant. Those animals you hunt, let's domesticate them. Put a fence around, now we're baking, baking. We ir irrigate, control water flows, plow the land, plant the crops, and watch them grow. Now my brother doesn't even have to farm no more. The Bronze Age, he making bronze arms and swords. The vision of labor, that's the plan. Now my eye can go and open that frozen yoga stand. You better know we trade it like Joes and settle down like Jericho. Can we put them cities and towns? You better recognize. So one distinct uh, feature for the hunter-gatherers is that they did indeed um, roam and travel um, in order to find food and a place to temporarily settle. So the Homo sapiens sapiens are actually considered to be modern human beings. They began to migrate outside of Africa around 100,000 years ago. By about 10,000 B.C., Homo sapiens sapiens um, could have been found throughout the entire world using migration or the movement patterns. There's two theories that we believe occurred with this migration or movement. The first type of model that we believe um, occurred was an out-of-Africa model where the Homo sapiens actually left Africa and slowly began re being replaced by other early humans that they may have encountered um, as they traveled. Another theory is a multi-regional model. Basically, the multi-regional model states that there was an uh, early development of hominids over the course to then become modern humans, and this occurred at different locations within Africa, Asia, and Europe, and it occurred over different time periods. In the map, you can see that um, they started in Africa, they began working their way north into Europe, and some early humans, uh, Homo sapiens, traveled east into Asia. 
um, and then traveled to North America, South America, and even parts of Australia. On your map key, you notice that the sites of human uh, evidence or life being found dates back as far as 100,000 BC. So the black dot or circle represents a time period from 100,000 to 70,000 BC. The triangle represents uh, 70,000 BC to 45,000 BC. And then the square represents 45,000 BC to about 26,000 BC. So during the last ice age, between about 100,000 and 8,000 BC, the water level in the oceans actually began to drop, revealing something called a land bridge. This land bridge connected Asia and North America over the water known as the Bering Strait. Hope this helped you understand the um, PowerPoint or the slides presentation. Don't forget to complete and fill out your copy of the guided notes and submit them through Canvas. Thank you. Have a great day.